evening everybody so tonight or this week this week is uh chapter five this week is the week that uh, so each if you're joining for the first time I better explain what the heck i'm doing here in the first place each week uh, for the last few weeks i've taken a different chapter and read a little bit from the book to kind of give you guys a little flavor as to um what the heck the book is actually about and if you've pre-ordered it you know well, gee me might decide whether or not it was a good thing or not um yeah hopefully it was anyway so each week I, I, I take another chapter and I read part of that chapter and talk a little bit about my feelings my uh all those other those fun things that that have to do with each chapter and tonight is uh chapter five which is man up in your marriage um this topic, I, I I love this topic. Um, anybody that's married, I look at I look at it and I think you know this is a marriage is 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 one of those is is I think the the epitome or the pinnacle of the relationship pyramid in which I don't think there is a, is another is one that will give you as much joy and as much fulfillment from a relationship. Yet at the same time, as much frustration um, or angst, um, and I, th I, I was thinking about that as I was kind of sitting here preparing for tonight. I thought, "Geez, why is that?" You know, that, that's the person that we commit to, that we say we will love and cherish forever. Um, you know, the old saying: sometimes you treat your strangers better than you treat your loved ones or your own family. And I got to thinking about that with our spouse and it's one of those things I think where there is nobody that you know uh, that knows you as well as your spouse hopefully um, there isn't anybody that when, when you become completely vulnerable in the in that relationship um, and you really get past that honeymoon phase of somebody truly getting to know who you are those little idiosyncrasies that over time come out um, I think that's that's one of the reasons why it can be so challenging because we tr we do truly know each other and again I'm not saying it's bad um, there are times where it's like holy cow and it's not just you know me thinking that about my wife it's my wife thinking that about me and, and if there's any couple out there that says they they never have that. Um, everything's always rosy. Um, don't compare yourself to that couple. I'll tell you that right now because um, that couple's a unicorn couple. And they poop pink sherbet too, just so you know. Because um, that doesn't happen. I, I don't, I, there, there ain't a relationship out there that, that doesn't have its trials and tribulations. So um, do not let yourself get... Com or do not compare yourself and do not let yourself get into that trap of com of comparing yourself against another couple because it's just not fair um, especially couples on Facebook because you see all this lovey dovey um, uh, you see the good sides you see the oh my husband rocks or oh my wife's the best or oh look at my husband did for me today um, what you don't see is do you know what how bad my husband pissed me off this morning or do you know how bad my wife pissed me off this morning you don't see those things because people typically don't put that on Facebook they put the stuff and some people put enough of the stuff that you want to stick your finger down your throat sometimes and vomit um, but anyway uh, boy that just took a turn didn't it that went from unicorns pooping pink sherbet to uh, sticking your finger down your throat and vomiting huh well, anyway, so let's get right down to reading. How's that sound? Um, so this this part of the uh, man up in your marriage, watch your. This is what I call watch your punctuation. No, I'm not going to teach you how to write a love letter for your wife, but I am going to lay out a few sentences that I want you to read. Think about what they really mean based on the punctuation. I'm sorry, honey, but I got busy and forgot. I love you, but right now you're really irritating me. I, I agree with you, but I think you need to do this instead. What do you see, or in this place, hear with these sentences? I'm sure you see or hear there is a but in every one of them. The but and the comma 
to put it as simply as I can, are nothing but excuses. They completely contradict how we started the sentence. Seriously? I love you, but... All that says is, I love you, but not really, and here's why. I'm sorry, but... I'm sorry, but let me try and make it hurt a little less that I couldn't remember something important to you. I agree, but... I agree with you, but I'm just kidding, and here's why. Words do matter, and I guarantee your wife will notice if you start watching what and how you say things. How different do you think she would respond if instead you said it like this? I'm sorry. Honey, I forgot. My bad. How can I make it up to you? I understand what you're saying. I don't necessarily agree with it, and I'd like to talk about it more. This is the big one. The only punctuation that should come after I love you is either a period or an, exc or an exclamation mark. I love you. Because of that, I need to step back for a second and calm down so I don't say something really stupid. Recently, I had the pleasure of sitting down with a guy I respect and who I feel is crushing the area of being a good husband. Now, this is the lead-in into who I interviewed in this chapter, and that is none other than the, the Varick Birchfield. And so each of these chapters, if you don't know, um, I interview a man that I think is really kind of has his crap together when it comes to this area of his life. Um, not all of us have each of all these areas together. Um, some of us are better at other areas than, than, than other areas. So Varick is, is the one that I interviewed for Chapter 5. And hopefully I'm going to try and get him on a Facebook Live video this week and let you guys hear from him a little bit on why he wanted to do it and why he thinks it's, that this would be a good book. Um, but on that whole punctuation piece, you know the... Uh, oh, i got to try and find where, but where I'm going to find where it was. I closed it. Oh, here it is. Um, how we punctuate when we talk to each other. Now, obviously, this the book is written for men, for their wives, and kind of with that slant to it. But it, it honestly, this can this can go from wives to their husbands. This can go from uh, parents to their children. This can go from uh, business leaders to their employees or to their teams. It it really doesn't change. But I think that punctuation piece is important. The but and the comma can seriously, like I say in the book, it can contradict everything that comes before it. It actually will negate everything that comes before it. So I think just watching that one piece and how we punctuate can make uh, a, a, all the difference in the world. Um, and it's, it's simple. There's a difference. It's simple. The premise is simple. The idea is simple. The action, the accomplishment of it, is not always so easy. And why is that? I think it's because a lot of the times when we're dealing with, when we're in these situations where, I'm sorry, honey, but I got busy and forgot. I love you, but right now you're really irritating me. I agree with you, but I think you need to do this instead. There's one common thread with all of those. And the common thread with all of those is emotion. It's really hard to think rationally, to think factually. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. Um, when there is emotion involved. I mean, you look at any argument. You look, look at a political argument. Side, one side versus the other. I'm not even going to talk about what side versus what side. But one side versus the other. If there's any, any inkling of emotion involved, you're at an impasse. That's the way it is. And that's the hard part here. Again, the simple part is the idea. The simple part is how we say our words and where we put the punctuation and, and those types of things. But it's not easy because we have to remove ourselves from that emotional piece sometimes and put ourselves in a factual piece sometimes in order to accomplish that. When you think back, think back to if you are married, the last time you got in a fight. Um, that emotion kicks in and all of a sudden you, you, it, it, the, the weird thing is you start arguing about one thing and then all of a sudden 20 minutes later you're trying to remember what it was what exact thing actually started this one you know it's like holy cow how did we get all the way over here onto the onto vehicles 
where do we start? Why? Where, where did this argument even start? What was the impetus for us arguing in the first place? Emotion. That's it. So we, the beautiful thing about us as human beings is we are emotional beings. Um, I say this, I'm going to take a risk and say this, I'm just going to say it. Um, males tend to be a little less emotional. Males tend to be a little bit more of that, that factual side of the reasoning side of the brain type of thing with uh, not enough emotion half the time. Um, the fairer gender tends to, to come from more of that emotional side of things sometimes. And so we both, we all have our sides that we go through or we come from. But when we get into this situation where there is an argument, where there is a disagreement, guess what? It's both. Both of the sides are emotional. <laughs> Shannon, you are emotional. Yeah, you are. You are. You are quite an emotional person, Shannon. I'm glad you. I'm glad you can admit that. Um, but anyway, when we get into those situations, we are. There is emotion, whether you're man or you're woman. That I guess that's my main point. Is we have to step back. We have to look at. Uh, you know, what it is we're trying to accomplish, what it, was, what it is we're fighting for. I've talked about that a little bit in the past too. Are you fighting for the relationship? Are you fighting for understanding? Are you fighting for respect and love? Or are you fighting to win? And I've said it before, because here's the thing, folks, and guys, listen up, because I'm, I, I, I'm going to talk to you because I am one, and if you're competitive at all like I am, if you're firstborn, you're stubborn, anything like that, um, I like to win. I don't like to lose. But one of the things that I had to learn, and you know what, I'm still learning, I haven't perfected this thing called marriage or relationships or anything else. Um, the one thing I've had to learn is this, if I'm fighting for those things in the relationship that I talked about, that respect piece, the relationship piece, the other things that are worth fighting for, it's okay. But if I'm fighting for, there's one thing that if we're fighting for it, it's wrong. If we're fighting to win, if we're fighting just to, in, in those situations where we become emotional, where, where those things happen, where we've got that clash as husband and wife, since this is the chapter on man up in your marriage, if we're fighting to win, here's the thing. There is a loser and the winner. Now, sometimes, even though you're fighting to win, men, um, you may end up losing. And she ends up winning. Sometimes it's the other way around. You end up winning, she ends up losing. At the end of the day, why in the hell would any of us fight hard enough to have our spouse end up a loser or collateral damage in a fight? I know, it's emotion. It's... Um, it's when that emotion piece gets in there for all of us, things take over. But I want you to think, I want you to think about it because that's one of the things that I say to myself every single time we get in an argument or we get in a fight, and yeah, we do. <laughs> we aren't pooping pink sherbet. Um, every time we get in that, the one thing I, I have to say to myself every single time, what am I fighting for? Sometimes I just, you can, you can ask Brenda, sometimes I'll continue fighting. There'll be times where I just go, I'm an idiot. I got to turn and walk around. I got to turn and leap because <coughs> I wasn't even, I, was, I didn't even know what I was fighting for. Anymore. I didn't even know what, what it was about. I didn't even know what started it. All I knew is that I wanted to win. And I can't, I can't, she doesn't deserve that. Plain simple. She does it. So, 
think about that next time. Just th those, those, let's see, what are you, what am I fighting for? Five words. That's all I want you to ask yourself. <coughs> once you, once, the very next argument you get in, guys, and for you gals that are on here too, I'm going to say the same thing. The very next argument you get in, as soon as you can, I want, I want you to try and hear me in your head just asking you a question. What are, or what am I fighting for? And if it's anything other than respect, love, the relationship, or along those lines, then stop. Stop and walk away. So that was it. That was, that was the night on Watch Your Punctuation. Um, that was a little bit from the book. Chris Skaggs, my brother-in-law Derek English says I really should go to advance in February. Yes, you should, Chris. It's a, it could be a life-changing experience for you. I highly recommend it. Carol says, I suck at being strong. My emotions are on the outside of my shirt sleeve. Well, Carol, we must shop at the same dang clothing store because somehow or another mine had to end up on my shirt sleeve too. That's one of the things that I struggle with. So don't feel, don't feel bad. Don't feel alone. Um, sometimes that's... Sometimes it's good for people to know right where you stand. Sometimes it's better to bring that a little bit closer to the vest and not let everybody see it. It's just getting better at figuring out when the right time is to let those emotions show through, in my mind. may not be right, but that's my mind. And it's my live video, so I guess I can say what I want. Um, Carol, keeping that respect is so important. I believe exactly it. There's Shannon. He's saying he's emotional again. Good, Shannon. Let's see, Kevin. Words are very powerful. Knowing how to use them is even more powerful. Right. You know what? That's what it is for me. Power in words. Lisa said, the best evidence of a great marriage is that it's not all over Facebook. It doesn't need to be. Thank you. I, I, okay, let me preface that. I got no problem with, with someone, uh, say it's your, your wife's birthday or your husband's birthday. And you put a post out there and it says, I love you, babe. Happy birthday. Here's a great father. Here's to a great dad and a great father. Awesome. Do it. Keep doing it. Because it means a lot. I mean, that, that wrecking, especially if, you, if your spouse is a words of adoration or words of love type of personality. That's their love language. Then, yeah, you, you better throw, throw a post or two out there every now and then that says you love them. But, goodness, yeah, it doesn't have to be this daily um, days of our lives stuff. That's for sure. Usually I find that the, 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 the people that are saying it the, like constantly, it's just a broken record. I guess the question is, who are they trying to convince, us or themselves? Half the time it's themselves. So anyway, let's see. Matt, can't we read a book? Thanks for saying thanks, Matt. I appreciate that, man. Jennifer, thanks for being authentic. Well, un <laughs> unfortunately, Jennifer, for my wife and some people that know me really, really well, the only thing I knew do know how to do is be authentic and who I am. So what you see here is what you get. So um, thank you for that, though. I appreciate it. Uh, Patricia and Todd, both my hubby and I are listening to this together. We both get emotional. There we go. If you're married, you're both going to get emotional. That's all there is to it. It's how you handle that emotion. <laughs> that can be either be epic or epic, one way or the other. Mary well said, thank you for sharing. Thanks, Mary. Appreciate that. All right, guys. So that's enough for tonight. I've probably kept you all the way past your bedtimes. And, um, yeah, I'm going to try and get Varric on here this week. Uh, I'm going to try and let you guys know uh, which night I get to get him on here and talk with him a little bit. I'm still going to try and get uh, Mr. Randy Murrah on here as well. He's he was in my uh, on the friendship side of the book that I, man I interviewed for friendship. Um, so try and get him this week yet too. And it's a nice nice week out. Of, if you're a motorcycle rider and you live in Minnesota, you, I dang well better see some pictures on Facebook of you on your bike in the next four to five days because after that, it's good, probably not gonna be the best to ride anyway. I'm gonna be out. So anyway, see you guys. Have a good night. Thanks for, thanks for joining me. Y'all take care.